Welcome back to another installment of the League's 4 series in which we unlock the strongest mage build to ascend to dragon rank. We left off with unlocking our 5th relic and getting our first 99 which was thieving. Today we're hard at work quote unquote rushing to test out some race 3 with our very humble gear. Pretty much every race 3 drop is super useful for me. Shadow is our most powerful weapon as our magic build but full Mazur is nice too being best in slot range armor. The Fang is super nice too because I don't have too many other good melee weapons. And it's probably going to be my overall best melee weapon for bossing. Of course the Light Bearer is amazing too because I don't have access to any DK's rings. So it will be my best overall ring as well. It all started like this though. We left our comfy Ammonites with base 60 combat stats hoping that it is decent enough to clear race 3 normal mode. We set out to get all the requirements to finish all the quests to do race 3. This meant 55 crafting for Beneath Cursed Sands and the other quest that is prerequisites. I wanted to unlock tier 6 Relic 2 for the 4x drop passive raid before race 3 as it would definitely save me a lot of time in the long run with grinding out the shadow and the rest of the drops here and obviously at things like chambers. As much as I love to be efficient and push for the next tiers as fast as possible, I am one of those guys that cannot help myself but get distracted with other shiny and interesting tasks even if they might take significantly longer to do so. So as a result, I ended up reaching my TOA sub goal by the next morning. After finishing one of the prerequisites for Beneath Cursed Sands, which was contact, I was already in Sophonim, so I decided to go ahead and get all the Pyramid Plunder easy tasks out of the way. Because of the Trickster Relic, any higher tier tasks involving Thieving, Agility Hunter, and Ephraim are very doable, so very efficient for the tier grind. I investigated the Squirk minigame to see what the hype was all about. Squirking was so hyped that there was an entire world for people squirking. In Leagues 2, the squirking method is pretty AFK, it's few clicks every 30 seconds. So while I was AFK squirking for some tasks, I planned some of my overall tasks I could do for fast points. Unironically, I didn't even do all those tasks I wrote down after because I got distracted with other tasks, but they will come handy in the next video most likely. Next, I tried out Soul Wars because my chat was hyping it up about how good it was for Per XP and that we could try to trade wins with my community. But it turned out to be a lot harder to guarantee wins, so that plan didn't quite work out. It was fun messing around in the Soul Wars world though. I wanted to barrage big clumps of people in Soul Wars when I was a kid, but my potato ass laptop couldn't handle the nerf fest and it would freeze. But now I got a $2,000 PC build that can easily do that, so it was nice to be able to fulfill my childhood dream. I got some tasks done from Soul Wars and got over 5,000 pair essence, which will be insane runecrafting levels whenever I get around to using them. The prayer XP is pretty good, especially once you get to tier 5 relic, but there is a cap, so I'll probably just do one a day. Speaking of exploring new possibilities, there's a game called Star Trek Fleet Command that's celebrating its fifth year of exploration. This game really encapsulates the magic of space and the opportunities of exploration, just like the shows and the memes you stumble upon in the deep expanse of the internet. Now you can experience it for yourself through Star Trek Fleet Command. This game is a 4x MMO available on PC and mobile. I enjoy my time playing it as a budding ship captain, rusted in the vast expanse of space full of different alien civilizations. Sometimes I fight off certain groups of aliens, sometimes I help them. I joined an alliance right away ran by fell players that has helped me improve my home base. This allowed me to expand my space exploration capabilities as I learned to make more ships to explore even further. I learned how to upgrade my ships and gather recruits to proficiently sail across space and deal with enemies and even opposing players more effectively. This game also teaches you how to play and reward you every step of the way, from exploring more regions of space and fighting more enemies, to improving your bases, ships, and recruits. If you're a fan of Star Trek or love the idea of life as an explorer of the universe, this is the game for you. Play Star Trek Fleet Command for free using my link in the description or by scanning the QR code and once you're in the game you can redeem a new player reward using the text warp speed as shown on the screen which helps you unlock a very powerful recruit perk faster i'll see you on the other side of the universe next i went to barber soul to get my best in slot melee body the fighter torso based on my region which was also a nice 80 point task it only took about an hour so it was decently worth it points next thing that i did for points was to go for the fire cape it is one of the most efficient tasks in leagues usually for points but before that though i needed to get some prayer potions because i was not going to try to one tick flick the whole fight case with just 50 prayer points 
So I went ahead and barraged or rather ice bursted some maniacal monkeys for a bit. I just went ahead and bursted till 85 magic. And that gave me a good amount of prayer potions that I would need for the fight case and also for that TOA attempt. In the distant future though, I do see myself chinning the manacles as well for 99 range because with the Tristal Relic, I can get chinned super fast and it's like doubled or something every time I catch one. So look forward to that. So I went to Fire Caves now and it was really easy with the Magic Relic. So I breezed through it for some super efficient points. Fire Cave 2 is good for TOA and for any melee stuff. So nice, freeze the melee guy and then just take care of the pesky ranger. And then freeze him again because he thinks he can get next to me, but he can't. Oh, I froze it so he can't even reach me. <laughs> oh my god, imagine freezing the major. Holy. See, this is what I mean by movement animations are wild. <laughs> Oh my god, like your character is literally just scuffed. Alright boys, here we go. Alright, let's just tank a hit first. Ooh, I tanked the hit! Yes! And I didn't even kill me, it didn't kill me, so... We take that, we take that. Yeah, dang. I am so accurate, it's actually insane how accurate I am. Please kill it before it heals, before it heals, before it heals. Nice. A near miss, four points. Uh, fight caves too, as well. Ooh, nice. Okay, I got a bunch of common tasks too. And then where the fire cave, that's 200 points, I want to say. Holy shit, 230 points to the next relic. And I haven't even used any of these super easy ones that I, I wrote down. After that, I got really close to tier 6 relics, so I didn't have to worry about doing too many tasks too. Now, I moved on to gear prepping for Rates 3. There were two items I wanted for Rates 3, which were the Warp Scepter and a Magic Shortbow. You might be asking, isn't autocasting ancients better than a Warp Scepter? The answer is complicated, so it's not a full yes and it's not a full no. What I mean is, regular spells like Ice Barrage and Fire Surge have this issue where if you move an attack, you will get a stall whenever you do attack again. And the only way to stop that is if you take perfectly manual clicks the spell and then right click your target after every time that you move. As shown in this clip of Kirby, one of the best DVMers, hilariously attempting to do this at Aka Boss with Ancient Magics. This is not easy because you're attacking with blowpipe speed with a stall. It is so easy to mess up and you also get tired trying to move and hit efficiently after a while when you're fighting a boss that requires a lot of moving. Weapons with built-in spells though has no delay so you can easily just move and click your target with a left click and you lose no attack potential. And guess what baby, Warp Scepter is one of those weapons that has a built-in spell like a trident so it is very smooth to use when moving. Also the Warp Scepter's magic damage scales with my magic unlike Ancients. So that means when I am salted at rates 3, I'm going to be hitting like 30s anyway. So it'll be almost the same DPS normally. And there's no stalling whatsoever. And the reason for the magic sword bow is simple. I do not want to use a freaking bone crossbow rates 3. As much as a masochist I may seem to portray myself as in RuneScape, I do not plan on suffering that badly at rates 3 with a freaking bone crossbow. Magic sword bow will be a pretty big DPS improvement. And the Warp Scepter though required the Path of Glauf request and that quest required a Mythal Grapple. I went ahead and got the Smithing and Fletching level 59 to make it. I did Elemental Workshop 2 and Giant's Foundry for Smithing. I did a lot of Arrow Making mostly for 59 Fletching. I also needed 56 Sir for the quest and to kill the mobs that dropped the Scepter so I did a bunch of Fire Giants because that was a task for that level. I also got Tier 6 Relic Unlocked from the random task I did on the way to the Scepter. I am super excited to take advantage of that forest drop rate passive for TOA and also for this scepter I'm about to get as it is affected by it. I chose Equilibrium for my tier 6 relic because it is so helpful for training every single skill. Every action that gives an XP drop will grant me bonus XP for every 10 total levels with Equilibrium. This means I was already getting 130 extra XP at 1300 total for every XP drop. Farmer's Fortune only helped with farming stuff, so it didn't seem too useful. And Runa's Prayers barely improves my damage because I will unlock Rigor Augury and Piety anyways. 
That's what we need that crossbow for, boys. There it is. Path of Cloud Free done. And I still have to do freaking Beneath Curse Sands. Alright, I'm pretty sure I don't have any hard clues in my bank because I've only ever gone to. Oh, I got it! Oh, yo, what the hell? That was nice and quick. Let's go. Oh, man, it's getting so late. Holy shit, boys. Let's go. Oh, wait, I'm out of cash already? Oh, damn, I did not realize uh, I spent that much money. That's okay. That's fine. We'll make it back. We don't really need money anymore, so. It was time to grind for the Magic Shopo. I decided to go with hard clues for it as usual. I first went to Hellhounds because they normally have the best clue rate, but I realized with Bloodthirsty Relic, I can get hard clues even faster through Slayer. What I mean by that is, Superiors give guaranteed clues in leagues, and with Bloodthirsty Relic, Superior's spawns is only 1 in 25. Jagex did troll a bit with the Slayer list this time because it took me like 15 skips to actually get a task I could give Superiors that gave hard clues. There were so many crappy tasks like constant hill giants and black demons for some reason. Just need to get a task. Oh, look at that. See? And I got bloodthirsty. The only problem is this does not drop hard clues. This drops mediums. It's just I'm out of slayer points, so I kind of just have to do whatever fast tasks I can get. But this is an example of how bloodthirsty works. Oh, it uses freaking the uh, prayers from the ruinous prayers. But that's sick. I got points, as you can see. Guaranteed clue. So we just need to get like a blood veil task, and then we get a superior blood veil, superior, superior booty veil, and uh, yeah, th this is exactly how it works. Yeah, bloodthirsty, sick. It also gives me slayer points, so I can skip more. This will be great for the imbue hard grind coming out. Yes, let's fucking go, dude. Blood veils. It took like 20 attempts to get a goddamn blood veil task or anything that was slayer specific. Let's go hard clues up the wazoo. Let's freaking get it. Anyways, I made the slaughter and expeditious bracelet as it never degrades with my bloodthirst relic, making them omega OP in this league. This is going to be super nice for milking clues from my blood veil task I just got finally after again like 20 skips, and later on too for imbue heart hunting as I can milk the tasks that give superiors. Oh, I got it. Yes. Okay. Free clue scroll boys check it out dang they even changed the look and everything all right boys look at this slayer xp drop holy look at that Oof. guaranteed clue scroll as you can see what the hell 15 error seats what in the world okay all right all right hopefully this one works please please be uh openable clue the answer is 22 22 we got it let's fucking go msb we manifested it all right now we are good we can do the quest now holy shit man there it is the rune arrows oh my god they're expensive though why hello why adamant Ar dude i might just buy adamant arrows bro oh my god uh adamant arrows is 31 strength rune arrows is i know it's a lot more or, okay, yeah, we have to buy. Yeah, we have to buy Runeros. One thing's for certain, I'm getting 99 range ASAP for that range cape so I can save some ammo. And also, we should get Rune Crossbow because it's a lot cheaper with the Bra Bolts. When we can, maybe tomorrow. Now that I got all my gear, it was time to finish Beneath Cursed Sand's quest and start race 3, aka Tombs of a Masca. The boss fight in this quest was quite challenging as both bosses were incredibly resistant to magic. Despite that though, magic was still overall my best choice against them. I did try ranging and meleeing as it was their usual weakness, but it was noticeably worse. That's just how OP the combat relics are. Thank you. Holy shit. This is harder than TOA, I swear. Wow. There it is. 50,000 Jody XP. Wow, made for Jody. Ooh, also 80 points. Yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We're going to be humble and we're going to do 150 TOA. We're not going to try for expert right now, but so yeah, this is what we got. Modest melee, really, really modest range. Really, really modest. Finally, we're going to get our first ever tombs of Mesca KC, except it wasn't easy at all because it took me two tries. Zabek and Kefri was no issue though with magic. 
It was slow, but it wasn't too different from the usual. We... Alright. Okay, that took so long. Six uh, minutes, but... Magic worked, though. Magic did its job. I want to say Liquid Adrenaline would be nice, because like I need the DDS to go crazy for uh, E2 Warden, so... I'll pick this. Forever, just to make this a little easier. No, mining level, don't interrupt me. What are you doing? Oh my god, mining level, why would you... Oh no, this is bad. I'm gonna have to two down this, oh well. Akka, however, was an absolute pain in the ass. Dragon Scimitar was almost useless on the final phase, and I didn't have 65 attack for the Partisan, so that backup plan was dead on arrival. Magic was incredibly good when Akka was weak to it, but I needed a lot of practice to learn the two-take butterfly, so I wasn't able to take advantage of that there. But after exhausting way too many prayer potions and carrot bonds, we cleared Akka. Holy shit, please. Just die. Die, 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 die. Come on. Holy shit, man. Yeah, that's why I really wanted the warp scepter, because yeah, I needed that flexibility. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad, not too bad. So we will see how Bubba does, man. But Baba was just as horrific. The monkey puzzle, though, wasn't too bad. But I had to really rethink my strategy at Baba because I could barely do damage to it regardless of my style. We're just gonna have to restart the entire thing. I had to flee like a little noob, but I realized a few things that would change my fate at race 3. The first thing was getting a better stab weapon, so I went ahead and bought a giant longsword. And I noticed that the level 115 vacation setup that Jax recommended to me was absolute dog shit. They had walked the path on, which meant that the bosses gradually leveled up. No wonder freaking Baba and Akka was so tanky. It's because they leveled up two to three times by the time I got to them, because they're typically my end ones. And even with max gear in the main game, you can feel that tankiness, so. Anyways, I took off, walked the path, and I revamped the 150 invo setup to be way nicer and different, and that made a vastly noticeable difference. There you go. That should be a lot better. Holy shit. No wonder. I can't two take cast all the time. I just need to like run a bit more. I think this is the, the way I, I got to do this. Ooh, all right. That was better. Maybe I can make it. MSB, dude. MSB, bro. Holy shit, the tech. <laughs> the MSB tech, bro. You saw that? Holy shit, now I can do this too. I forgot about the mage strat. Baba was massively easier as I figure out a few new strategies that you'll see mid fights. The difference was night and day. Suck my. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna be polite, alright? But hell yeah, it took five minutes, but we did it. Oof. God damn, that was hard. But I innovated, bro. You know, I used all I remember. Caught me off guard the first time, all right? Just saying. But we good, we good. All right, that felt much easier. Oh my God, what a difference. This is the really hard part, though. Yes. Nice. Okay, much better. All right, we have made it all the way to Warden. Akka took nine minutes. We freaking made it. Now we can actually grab these, though. Insane supplies now. All right, we can bin the Karen bonds. Those can go. Now we're going to take these. Holy. Real supplies. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Oh, I need that so bad. I'm not going to lie. I have not done any race three in several months. So I almost made a super dumb mistake on my first Warden Phase 1. You will see. Because I'm standing still, I can do this. Ooh, I'm melting this pillar, dude. Let's go. Oh, wait. Oh, fuck. Ah. Oof. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Ay, ay, ay. There we go. I need to delay it. I fucking forgot about that. Ooh, I almost killed myself. Good thing I have, I have my ambrosia, dude. Holy. Oh, my God. Ah, oh, dude, fuck. I'm so rusty at this. <laughs> We're uh, all right. We have made it. Goddamn. 
After surviving phase 1, it was time to see if I would die of old age or I would clear phase 2 warden fast enough before the sunrise. I realized that I needed my D skin for core phase so I can 3 down warden P2 instead of 4 downing it. But I did otherwise clear it comfortably and before the sun rose. Please just die, bro. Pick up my arrows. Anyways, last phase warden was super free, so it was nice to actually end it on something chill. Yeah, no, I don't know what it is. Like, why is my character... What is that glitch? It's not supposed to do that. But look, look at how awesome this is. This is why you want something like this. I mean, also, it's just OP when you pair it with uh, 117 like magic or whatever, 20, 25 plus magic levels. That gives the scepter an extra like 7 damage or something. More than that, even. But yeah, look at this. I'm rinsing it right now, dude. Look at that. Absolutely rinsed it. Holy shit. Oof, nice. Hell yeah, dude. First TOA completed on the account, one of many. And uh, that feels freaking good, man. That was difficult. I'm gonna melt this. I'm gonna melt this, man. I can't wait to go to sleep, dude. I've been I've been up for another I've been uh, gaming for another 15 session uh, hours. Brain is dead. Here we go, boys. Ah, white light. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, white light. It's all good. Dude, look at how many things keep popping up. Oh man, the rewards are just pitiful. But I completed a lot of different tasks. Holy shit, how many tasks did I complete? Did I just gain like 500 points? Holy. Achievement, easy tier, take out achievement, 25 card achievement, points, complete, tomb, oh, that's... Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Give me that light because it's 7 a.m. and I haven't slept yet. Seriously though, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and maybe even subscribe for more content. I will see y'all with some purples hopefully in the next video. Ciao.